So um, in the previous video I demonstrated snapshots and how we can roll back to a previous snapshot. I'm going to show um, another technique for recovering data which it could be more useful um, which relies on the use of snapshots um, and it's a way of accessing files from an earlier snapshot and it doesn't have to be the previous snapshot, it could be any number of or any snapshot that's um, quite distant so you could have five snapshots and we wanted to access the earliest one not the most recent one which is what you could only do if you roll back you could only roll back from the re most recent snapshot um, and that feature is uh, clones and what we effectively do is we create a clone of the file system at a particular point in time using that particular snapshot so if we just check to see what state we're in at the moment, so if we do ZFS list, we've got a snapshot which locks in our really important file. Um, I'm going to recreate the changes that I made before. Oh, let's copy it first. So I copy the file and modify it. So there again we have now two files on the file system. We've got the original file which is locked into the snapshot and we've got the new one which um, is not locked into the snapshot. But let's be safe, let's take another snapshot and call it snapshot 2. So now we've got them both locked in. And you can see the earlier one's taken some space up because we've made some changes, but the most recent one has not taken up any space because there hasn't been any changes to the file system since then. Now, um, what we want to do is to, let's delete quotes in ax by accident, the original file. And it's not what we wanted to do. We've still got the original, uh, the second file and we don't want to delete uh, or remove the file, we don't want to lose this file this time. If we rolled back um, to the first snapshot we'd lose this file um, and that's not what we want to do. And in any case we could only roll back to the most recent snapshot which is one I just took which um, may not be what I wanted. We could, In fact we could roll back to that because it did have a copy of the file um, there at a time. But supposing I didn't want um, the uh, really important file 2, supposing I only want the really important file 1, I accidentally deleted the wrong file again. If I rolled back I'd end up with both files and I'd have to manually, manually delete um, the file 2 to leave me where I was. And then I would also lose the other snapshot because I'd have to delete this snapshot to get to that snapshot. So it's not an ideal situation. So what we can use is a feature called clones. And to do that we do ZFS clone. We specify the snapshot that we want to use. So we want to use snapshot 1 because that's where the original file was. We... Um, specify the data set and the snapshot name that we want to deal with and then we specify a pool and a data set name that we wish to use to access this data so what this is doing is making a clone or a copy of the file system as it was at the time of snapshot one and it doesn't create any any more data or anything, it doesn't use any more space, it's just intelligently using the differences between um, uh, the state of the file system at that time um, when, when that snapshot was taken. So now if I do ZFS list you can see that we've now got another data set called test old it's not taking any space up because it's a copy of this snapshot but it's, it's not a snapshot, it is an actual clone and it's also not a proper data set. Um, 
it can't you can't do certain things with it because it is a clone it's not a, a proper um, data set so if we do ls minus l test test you can see we've now got two directories under the test called test and test old and you can also see that in the current data set which is a real file system if you like we've got the file that we intended to delete but in the clone file system data set that we've created you can see our original file so we've now got access to it so I can view it and just check that it is the file we want and I can go in and copy that back to here recover it into the main file system Oops. and then delete the file that I really wanted to delete which is file number 2 and this, the file system, the main file system is back to how it was and then all we've got to do after that is to delete the clone and to do that all we need to do is do zfs destroy test slash test hyphen old and the clone is destroyed and we're back to how it was with our two snapshots so that's a way of using clones to get back to older data without having to roll back and potentially lose new data and also without having to delete any snapshots to gain access to older snapshots um, clones can actually be promoted to become first what they call first class um, first class file systems so if we decided that clone test old was good enough to carry on as a main file system we can promote it using there's a promote command to make that the active file system and then that makes test test a clone so that that loses its status as a fully fully blown file system and we'd, we would have to delete that um, to get rid of that and then the new test test old we would have to rename which is simple enough it's just ZFS rename um, the old name and then the new name we want to call it as you can see there just specifying two snapshots uh, sorry two file systems this one up here um, and that's it to destroy a I don't think I mentioned this actually on the snapshot part but to destroy a snapshot like a clone it's just destroy and I don't want snapshot 2 around anymore so I just use the pool name again data set name and the snapshot that I want to delete and I don't have to delete the most recent one it can be any snapshot for example I could uh, delete snapshot one if I wanted to um, in fact what I'll do is I'll take another snapshot of the system before I delete anything snapshot 3 and now for example I want to delete snapshot 2 it's out of date or not needed anymore so just specify the snapshot 2 and it's deleted